What's up guys, welcome to Daily Refinement. Today I'm gonna to address one of the most common questions, which is how do I do eBay with no money? So one of the most popular models on eBay is consignment. Today we're gonna to go over eight items that I'm consigning from my videographer, Christine. We're gonna go over all the different rules, conditions, how I handle returns, how to set up a spreadsheet, all of that information in this video. So please smash the like button, consider subscribing. We'll see you inside. So before we get into the video, there are two examples of two stores that are successful consigners that I'm gonna link here or in the description below. One is One Luxotic Thread and one is Goose Guy 84. Both of those stores are consignment. They're only in one niche and they're a good example of how consignment is done. One Luxotic Thread makes about $50,000 per year profit and Goose Guy 84, he's about $100,000 profit per year consignment, meaning they did not use any of their own money with the inventory in their stores. And that's rule number one out of about 12 rules that we're gonna go over today, which is usually you do consignment or you buy your own items. Very rarely do I see people who just mix in consignment because it's so complicated that I recommend you don't do that. If somebody wants to consign items with you, which will happen in your resale career, just try to arrange it so you buy the item from them so that you can avoid a lot of the hassles that come with consignment. So today we have eight items from, cons from Christine and this is where it becomes really important for you to stick inside of your niche because there are three rings that she's consigning and it did take a little bit of research to figure out what the rings are worth. Luckily, I was able to consult Linda in our jewelry call. We have a jewelry specific call in our mentorship group. She was letting me know that the 18 karat gold ring might be worth as much as $280 scrap metal. So I wouldn't know that as a clothing seller. She also was telling me that the sterling silver rings are very, very competitive on eBay. And there's a lot of overseas Chinese sellers selling them for one to five bucks free shipping. Very difficult to compete. She marked those ones at around 15 to $18 value, including shipping. So it's important to understand what niche you're in. You also have the right as a consignor or the seller to decline any, any items that you don't want to sell. So we have hair curlers, we have a Fitbit Alta HR, which is the heart rate version. We have a Uniqlo sweater, which I would understand how to sell because it's in my niche. I can tell you this jacket's probably worth about $60. So the consignment terms are really important. You work it out with whoever you are consigning with and I recommend you have a set rate so the easiest one, in my opinion, is 50-50. So how that would work is, let's say this jacket is worth $60. I sell for $60 plus shipping. I would give Christine $30. That's a 50-50 split. All the fees come out of my end. Now, some people try to set it up so it's 50-50 or a percentage of sales after they take out all the fees and shipping, but that's difficult for a consignee to understand. Because if I said, this is gonna sell for $60. What I'm gonna do is deduct the shipping, um, deduct the sales tax, but those are paid by the buyer. And then we also have eBay fees, we also have storage fees, we have rental fees, we have my gas for driving into the post office. That's way too complicated. No one's gonna to wanna to consign their items with you. So you have to make it make sense for them. And it easily starts to become overwhelming for a lot of people because it's a lot of different things to track. That's why I recommend you definitely have a spreadsheet set up, which we'll go over at the end of the video. Um, but as far as making sure that you're clear with terms with the consignee, I think a simple 50-50 split is useful for most people because she could sell the jacket on her own and get around 70%. So she would get maybe $42 to $45-ish if she sold it herself, took her own photos, did her own processing. So for $12 extra, would she trust me to do it? Probably because I'm a clothing seller. The other stuff though, I might not be able to get full value. If I was selling these rings, because there's no other rings in my store, people might not believe me when I say a certain value and assign it to it when I'm selling it. So it's important. Most consigners only sell one category. So here we have two generic um, items. One is a like an iWatch knockoff and the other is just a generic speaker. So these two items normally in a consignment shop I would pass because they don't sell for enough money. They might sell for five or ten dollars locally like if you're at a flea market or a bazaar and you saw them on the table or you're on Amazon or eBay looking for a cheap speaker or digital watch 
these items would be like $12, $15, including shipping to you. So locally, maybe five to 10. In this example though, for our spreadsheet, which we're gonna go over later, I've included like I'm gonna consign all of them, which is something that you probably will have to do if you do consignment because higher end clients don't have time to sort the best items for you. So they're just gonna drop off a big pile of stuff. You're gonna have to determine what you wanna consign and what you don't, which comes to one of the rules, which is you're gonna have to decide whether or not you can send items back to the customer and what are the terms with that. So for me in consignment, if you want to get an item back, the rule that I would set up is at 9 a.m. in the morning. So you send me an email with what items you want to send back. At 9 a.m. the following day, if the item has not sold, I will end the item off of eBay, issue a return label, send it back to you, and then deduct that from your balance as the consigner. That's also complicated because you've also got to track what people's balance is, or you could say, we need a credit card on file and we will bill you for the shipping when that happens, which adds, again, another layer of complexity. And it's very dangerous to store people's payment information. So I would recommend you just credit that to their balance later. And so to keep it easier. So next is gonna be, um, once you have the split, we're gonna go 50-50. Now we're either gonna do getting the items in are either going to be done in person so somebody comes to you with a bunch of their items you go through it quickly what's going to sell what's not or you can do it by mail which is much more popular the big company thread up does that you put all your stuff in a box send it over they tell you which ones are accepted which ones are rejected by mail and then they send whatever is back or they can even donate it for you so that's one way of doing it i recommend if you're gonna get it by mail to get a manifest of what's coming in so that you're not wasting each other's time. Like as an example, since I did my most recent auction, a few people had reached out and said, I have a hundred or so items that I wanna sell through you. Here's a list, what do you think? What would be the terms? If you have the terms already set up, it's very easy. You can say, go to chrisconsignment.com, doesn't exist, but read the terms there and see if it's fair, send it in. That's how you would set up a consignment shop. So. Sales tax is collected and remitted for you by most platforms, and depending on what state you are in. So what that means is on a $60 item, maybe you live in California and the sales tax is 10%, that $6 is collected by eBay and remitted by eBay so you don't even see it. But it's important to understand that part because the fees are associated on $66, not 60. So it's important to understand how eBay works. As you guys know, I also have that 100 listing challenge where you go through 100 items and figure out what your actual fees are. So we have that link here we'll put up so that you can learn how the fees work on eBay. Because if you're going to do eBay using other people's items, then you really need to be really, really organized financially in order to pull that off. Okay, so payment method. I recommend either check or PayPal once a month. I recommend the first Friday of every single month. And the reason why I recommend PayPal is they will, in most cases, if it's over $600, issue your client a 1099 so you don't have to worry about it. You also have an electronic copy of you sending a payment to somebody else. If you put in the notes section what that payment is for, then now you have a record of cost of goods sold in your particular store. Otherwise, if I sell this for $60 and I don't have a record of paying Christine $30 for the cost of goods, then I'm liable for all $60 of the revenue with no actual way to deduct the cost. That's why you would want that record through PayPal. And again, um, I'm not a CPA, don't sue me. Um, this is just, my experience but i'm not a license i can't give you legal advice on how to how to run that so next is going to be the aged inventory process um, once you have these items what happens if they don't sell so i'm going to recommend you discount the item 25 percent every 30 days because you want the items to move quick your storage space is expensive that's really your only cost when you're running consignment is your own space and time so 25 percent every 30 days that means after 90 days it's actually 75 percent off if it doesn't sell after 90 days, I recommend starting it at an auction at $1 and they end up getting whatever they get at the end. And that way you're clearing out inventory, you're giving some people in your store a really good deal so they come back so they know all the aged stuff I can get for a great deal. Also, they have discounts for items that are aging over time. You can build up that repeat customer base, which is really important in the consignment space because when you have a lot of repeat customers, you can tell your future consignees 
I get a lot of money from my items because a lot of people follow my store. If you don't have that heavy influence though, people are not gonna trust you with their, their amazing items. I recommend consigning items that are over $100. That way, at the when it's all said and done, usually consignment models make between 10 and 20% profit. So at every $100, you make between 10 and $20. And all the stuff I talk about on my channel is based on making at least $10 profit per item. So I recommend $100 and or over for consignment. That being said, consigning items over 1,000 has its own unique set of challenges because there's more fraud in that category. So if you consign a Rolex or a Gucci pair of shoes, some people will try and scam you. So you need to factor that in. Make sure you take the best pictures you can. I recommend free returns so that you can ask eBay to step in if there's any kind of issue. So that type of High-end consignment, also very, very popular. And to be honest, most people who do consignment do accept items all the way up to $20,000 because that's where the real money is at. When you're selling Chanel, when you're selling those really high-end items, and again, that's why the real real is so successful because they offer authentication. And that's something that eBay is starting to do more and more of, especially now they just added sports cards. So eBay is moving more into consignment to help buyers trust you and also protect sellers because if you send it to eBay to authenticate, the customer can't say that it's not real. eBay is going to make sure that it's real first and then send it over. And this is also why you'd want to be specific in your niche so that you could identify fakes. So now all those 12 rules that we went over, if that doesn't scare you um, from doing consignment, which it should because it's very complicated, um, also let me know in the comment section below if there are any other rules or pitfalls that you have seen with consignment that you want people to watch out for. Make sure you let people know in the comment section below and smash that like button. So now let's go over how to keep track. Now, these are the things that I would keep track of if I was doing consignment. The people who do split after fees, they have to keep track of a lot more. So the reason why I have decided to do a clean split is so I can only keep track of nine things. So if you do a clean split, a non-clean split, you split after fees, you have to keep track of maybe 14 or 15 different line items and that's a lot to do 15 pieces of work for every single item. So what I would keep track of is inbound date, when do the items come in, market price, what do we think it's gonna sell for, I'm gonna set that price as the, as the seller. Next I'm gonna go over what date did it actually sell, I'm gonna go over our percentage, so if it sold for 100 and we're 50-50, I'm gonna keep track of the 50%. I'm gonna keep track of how much I think I'm gonna pay, how much I actually pay. So that's estimated payout versus actual payout. When I actually paid the customer, I'm gonna go over how much I paid the customer, what date, and the status. Is this consigned um, but not yet listed? Is this listed but not yet sold? Is it sold but not yet paid out? Or is it sold and paid out? So I'm gonna assume all liability of return as the seller and that's something that you should do if you're going to be consigning items otherwise you're going to be telling your person sorry i can't pay you for six months and one week so the credit card um, chargeback period has ended nobody's going to want to consign items with you because they don't want to wait six months and one week for the sale so it's really important to understand you want to do everything you can to get people to give you their best items and when you're consigning honestly it's just going to be a few people who bring you the most items i know with consignment shops they really just deal with a few clients that have too much stuff so you've essentially you just want a few millionaire clients that need room in their closets and they are just giving you everything like they need new furniture they just give all their furniture to you they need new clothing they just drop off all their old stuff that's the type of client you're looking for because the less clients you have the easier it is to run this. Before we filmed this video, Christine was saying, imagine keeping track of like 100 clients. Now you have 100 separate spreadsheets for 100 different people. And one more reminder, you have to send people a status update to let them know what's going on with their items. That's also one more level that I would recommend that you do. So every month, send somebody an, in or a, an email with an invoice, like this is, you have 12 items with us, two sold, those have been paid. We have 10 left, all of them are listed. Here's a link to all of them. That would be a great way to handle consignment, but also an additional layer of work. So I appreciate you guys. Remember, you can do eBay with no money. It just requires a lot more work, a lot more attention to detail. But to be honest, even with all that in the video, still easier than running a different type of, of different type of business because all you need to start a consignment shop is just your cell phone to list. That's it. 
And you, if you just have one client at a time, you can keep track of all of it and you can really learn how eBay works. So that being said, I recommend you consign one item from a friend or family member so you can really delve deep and figure out how eBay works. So I appreciate you guys joining our Patreon group, patreon.com slash the resource podcast, and we'll see you guys next time.